Hello folks, did you see that blank screen there? That is an amazing new tool we've got to help us with these broadcasts uh, and it allows me to draw little pictures and all that kind of thing because have you ever seen me writing on post-it notes and just holding them up? Well now we've got a screen where I can do that. All part of the service trying to make this more fun for you guys and girls. So there you go, look you see I can write hello to you with a big smiley face, but more importantly, this lets me uh, teach you stuff that's harder to do, uh, you know, in words uh, than in pictures. Uh, so uh, there you go. A little sneak preview into some of the ways we teach behind the scenes here at Digital DJ Tips, live on this broadcast. There you go, we started off with something exciting. Well, hello everyone. It's me, Phil, here for another completely ad hoc question and answer session with everyone who is uh, knocking around on lockdown or maybe even coming out of lockdown now on this Friday. Friday afternoon here, it's 5 p.m., which means it's 4 p.m. in London, 11 a.m. Eastern uh, and so on. So if you're joining us in the States, good day to you. If you're joining us even further east than we are, good evening to you. And if you're in the middle of the night over in Australia or New Zealand, well, we're very proud to have you here. Thank you for joining us. If you're new to this, it's Phil Morse for Digital DJ Tips. We are the world's leading online DJ school and we're here to help you become better DJs and better DJ producers. We do that through our 22 courses, through our world leading website, through YouTube, through Facebook and Instagram and all those other channels. And you might be watching us either on YouTube or on Twitch or on Facebook in our global DJ group or in our page. Wherever you're watching this, thank you for being here. I'm here to help ask questions. This is a question and answer session. That's what this is all about today. Uh, it's about us helping you with your DJing issues uh, and just hanging out together because for me it's the end of the week so this is my hour in the pub before going home frankly uh, and what a week it's been so that's what it's all about please do hit the share button if you find anything at all in this hour that you enjoy as soon as something is useful to you hit share it really helps us to do this and would really appreciate it and if you're watching the replay it's probably because you weren't notified about us going live and it's easy to fix that just click the subscribe or the notify or the like and show posts first, whatever platform you're on. And then you'll find out when we go live and you can watch everything unfold uh, in the live environment instead of watching the replay. Right, that's it. That's the preamble over. Welcome everyone. It's great to have you here. I can see we're very, very busy already. Uh, so uh, hi to Willie who says, hello there everyone. Good morning salute. So you're clearly over there in uh, West Coast America. Good to have you here. DJ Jax, good morning to my fellow Aussies. It's 1 a.m. here. Hi to C Drip Trump in the Caribbean. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, so uh, hello to Steve in Detroit. Hello to uh, Juan in Tampa, Florida. Uh, to Beatrice in Belgium. Uh, to DJ Big Scully who just says, uh, sup Phil. Uh, hello to Greg in Detroit as well. Uh, and hello to Ken in the UK, uh, to Eric in Connecticut. Uh, this is awesome. It's good to have so many of you here. Right, questions. That's what it's all about. It's about questions. And this question from DJ Big Scully, what's your all-time favourite bit of DJ gear? What a really good question. You know, my all-time favourite bit of DJ gear, I think would probably have to be the VCI 300 from Vestax. Uh, and the only reason for that is it was, the, it was the controller that got me back into DJing, got me into digital DJing, having taken a break from DJing for a while. Uh, and I DJed on the little Vestax VCI 300 for so long. Uh, I played so many really awesome gigs on it that I thoroughly enjoyed. So if I just switch over to my uh, browser now, I can show you it, there it is. There's the Vestax VCI 300 controller in the middle of your screen there. Uh, I just love this little controller. I found it an, aw an awful lot of fun. Uh, and uh, so yeah, I think, I think I'd go for that. I mean, it was pretty useless really. Let's try and get that to fit the screen a bit better. There we go. It was pretty useless really. It didn't have any effects on it. It didn't have a filter on it and stuff, uh, but it just did the job. Uh, and I had a lot of fun DJing on that little thing. Uh, so yeah, I'd say, yeah, that's my favorite piece of DJ gear of all time. I lent it to my friend James. In fact, I gave it to him. So uh, James, if you've still got the VCI 300, give it a stroke every now and then for me, will you? Uh, so thank you for that question. Uh, more questions. Darren says, I just got your book from Amazon uh, last week. It was been a great read so far. Well, thank you very much, Darren. Uh, this is the book. It's called uh, Rock the Dance Floor. And uh, it is uh, my guide to DJing. The good thing is if you just want to read this, if you're not already a subscriber to Digital DJ Tips, just go to digitaldjtips.com slash join, sign up, 
and I'll give you a PDF version of this book as a thank you for joining us. So just go sign up, digitaldjtips.com slash join. Uh, but thank you very much uh, for that. I'm glad you're finding the book enjoyable. Uh, it has helped thousands of people. Actually, we've been talking about books this week. If you're on our list, you'll get an email today or tomorrow about books that we recommend to learn DJing from. And it reminded me that DJing for Dummies, uh, which I might even have here, and I think it might be at my other house, uh, but DJing for Dummies is, um, my name's on the front of that as well, because my friend John, who wrote it, I was his technical editor. I went through every page checking it all looked okay, and it was, he did a good job. Uh, so, you know, I'm proud to have been involved in the two biggest DJ books out there. Uh, so thank you for, for reading that, Darren. All right then, um, so Benedict just says, hello from the UK where the sun's out. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, thank you for your time, says Albert. This is not my time, honestly. This is, I couldn't think of anything I'd rather do than chat DJing with our community. So. So, um, but thank you very much for that. Uh, so, uh, all right then. We're not live on Mixcloud today, mainly because I forgot to put the code in. You have to sign up to Mixcloud differently. Uh, so sorry if you were looking for us on Mixcloud, you have to put up with us on some other channel. Uh, hello to DJX, DJLX808 in Aloha in Hawaii. Good to have, oh no, you says Alohaville, sorry. Yeah, in Maui in Hawaii. Good to have you here. Uh, to uh, M. Taha in Monaco, good to have you, uh, and uh, awesome, and uh, to Kiel in Sweden. Right, questions. Um, someone on our, on our Facebook group says, I'm looking into the Prime Go, is it as good as they say, and when will they be available in the UK? I've actually just brought our Prime, whoops, off camera, Phil clatters into the, she into the shelving. I've just brought our Prime Go back to here, it's been at my house for ages, this is the Prime Go. Oh look, there's me in the Prime Go. Look at that, wonderful screen display. Yeah, this is the Prime Go from Vestax, uh, from Vestax, from Den and DJ. I've just brought this back to the studio. I've been, I've been DJing with this at home. Uh, they're brilliant, I totally recommend them. The only thing I find is the jog wheels are so tiny that I accidentally touch the top for scratch when I want to touch the edge. So I just set them to kind of nudge only. Uh, I'm just going to put this back. Uh, but yes, the Prime Go is a wonderful controller and I thoroughly Thoroughly recommend it. Well, it's a DJ system, of course. It doesn't need a laptop at all. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, so it is as good as they say it is. Uh, unknown person over on our uh, on our group in Facebook. Uh, all right then. Um, so hi Phil. I was just wondering. Do you know if I can record vinyl in my mixes? Uh, using the record function of my RX2. Yes, I think you can. So the RX2 is a standalone DJ controller, kind of Pioneer's one. Yes, I'm, I'm sure you can. If you plug your decks in and DJ from those, uh, yes, you can. So uh, yeah, hope that's useful for you there. Uh, so next question is from Darren, who says, I just pulled all my old vinyl out from the garage, uh, looking for a turntable to connect to my DDJ1000 SRT. Plus I wanna to convert to digital for Serato. Any recommendations? Right, turntable, um, Audio-Technica's turntables are really good. Go for one of their kind of, uh, I can't remember the model name of the one I like, but uh, if I search for it quickly on Google now, I'll be able to tell you it. Um, so they're good value for money. Uh, the Newmark PLX1000, I think it's called, although that could be the name of the um, Pioneer one, actually. Uh, the Newmark one with 1000 in the uh, title is an absolute steal. Uh, it's called the NTX1000 by Newmark. Uh, and the reason it's a steal uh, is that it's basically the same as the very expensive Den and DJ1000, uh, the Den and DJ turntable, but it's nowhere near the price. So this is what it looks like. Uh, it's a pretty poor picture. I've got a bit here, I'll try and find a better one actually before I, uh, there we go, I found a good one. Uh, let me share this picture with you. That's the Newmark NTX 1000. It's metal, it's, it works really nicely, solidly built, uh, and it's a lot cheaper than the Denon DJ high-end turntable that is uh, basically made from the same cast. So I really recommend that one uh, if you want a good value, cheap turntable, or cheapish turntable. But we have done an article on Digital DJ Tips um, which I'll share with you now. I'll show you the article now. Uh, it is uh, this one here, says Phil, scrolling down trying to find it. Uh, it's always annoying when we are not the top article on uh, Google because we normally are for these things. So sort that out, Phil, uh, is the uh, message here. So it's this one here. Uh, it's our best 13 DJ turntables of 2020. Uh, so you can find this. Uh, on Digital DJ Tips, just search Best Turntables 2020 and head over to Digital DJ Tips and you'll find this article that goes into a lot of depth uh, about turntables. It shows you all the parts and 
you know what you uh, what you need to be looking for on them uh, and then it goes through our favorite turntables as well in quite a lot of detail so uh, I recommend that you head down there and find that article but I do recommend that Newmark turntable if you just want one turntable it's that one in the middle there the Newmark NTX and this is actually reminding me that there is a problem with this page that hasn't been fixed after months and months and months so I will give my team a slap uh, and I will get that fixed making notes to self uh, to get that sorted out see old school post-it notes uh, so, all right then, yeah, so that's, uh, that's where to go to find out about turntables. Thank you very much for that question, Darren. Uh, so the next question I have is from uh, Daniel, who says, do you have a brand of PC laptop that you recommend? I don't, Daniel, I have to be honest. It's a, it's a roundup that we're looking to do very soon uh, of the best laptops for DJing 2020. Right now, I don't have a recommendation I can give you, but thank you for that. We will, uh, we will get that sorted. Uh, hello to Cleo. 81 on Twitch, one of our small but growing members uh, over there on Twitch. Good to have you here. So Frankie, oh, Frankie Frank says, hi, I'm in Kenya. How can we go around the copyright issue on Facebook? My live stream keeps getting muted. You can't, it's really hard to get around it on Facebook. Uh, the best thing to do is to do it on YouTube where they're a bit more lenient or Twitch where they're a lot more lenient or Mixcloud Live or use Restream.io, uh, which is what we use to broadcast what you're looking at now to all those platforms. Use Restream.io to broadcast to them all at once, and then hopefully all of them will stay up. That will also be broadcast to Facebook. So even if Facebook goes down, people can go to the other platforms. Also, if you look at the way we live stream, uh, I'm actually live streaming on Sunday at um, 5 p.m. London, midday Eastern. So why don't you join me on YouTube, Twitch, and Mixcloud Live uh, to watch that live stream then. And you'll see that what we do is we put a, a whole set of links and stuff around me, or around the DJ, showing where to find the live stream. So if it goes down on one, they can just go to the other one uh, and carry on watching. Uh, so that could be a way to do it as well. You know, you know, you're hedging your bets a little bit there. But thank you for that question, Frankie, Frankie Frank. Uh, all right then, um, so the next uh, question is from Miles, who says, when you're recording on the XDJ RX2 with a USB stick, can you use Spotify and record your mix? Well, Spotify isn't on that, isn't on any DJ gear. Um, uh, with any type of music platform. Uh, right, so here's the, here's the thing. You cannot record, you cannot hit the record button in any DJ software as soon as you start using streaming music. So for instance, I've got here somewhere, um, in fact, no, it's not online, so I can't show you. I've got uh, Recordbox on that laptop here, it's here. In fact, I've got Serato, but it's got SoundCloud uh, down the side here and Tidal. Now I cannot, if as soon as I, I load a track from SoundCloud or Tidal onto the deck here and hit play, uh, the record will stop if I've got record enabled. If I'm recording something with this record button here, that will go off and I won't be able to record anymore. And the reason for that is that the licensing for streaming services does not allow DJ software to record on those services. So what will happen is as soon as that goes to uh, record, it will uh, cut off uh, when you put your streaming service on. There is no way around that apart from either using an audio interface like this little um, iRig stream interface I've got here, either using something like that uh, to record on another laptop or another device or even the same laptop, or you can actually hijack the audio inside computers. Now with MacBook, uh, there's a little piece of software called Loopback, and Loopback will let you just go, hey, record Serato for me, and that will record everything that you're doing, including your streaming service, and there are similar uh, pieces of software. There's one called Audio Jack for Windows as well. So you can record, but you have to jump through a few hoops. All right then, uh, Tech TV, do you prefer to DJ on a laptop or a standalone controller? I prefer laptop and the reason is I can't be bothered exporting to USB every time I wanna go and DJ. So I prefer to just take my laptop. My laptop's easy to take with me, plug it in. All the work I've done on my music is just there. It's very easy to scroll, very easy to look at all my playlists. I can't be bothered with the exporting. That's just me. Uh, a lot of people say, I never wanna take a laptop into a DJ booth with me. That's them. The truth is there's no, there's never gonna be a winner of this. You look stateside, a lot of DJs are happy to play Serato in the clubs on Pro Gear especially, uh, but in 
you know, in truth, there's never going to be a winner in this game. Some people will always prefer the laptop. Some people will always prefer to use USBs. What might happen is that you'll walk up, walk up to DJ, software, uh, DJ gear in clubs, you'll log in with the username and password, and all your music will be there. Because that's the way the cloud is going. And if your music's in the cloud anyway, you know, like when you take photos, you've got, I've got photos on there, I've got my photos app. Yes, all my photos are local on there, but they're also in the cloud because they're also on my iPad and so on. You know, when that becomes the norm for your music, you'll just be able to log into DJ Gear and all your music will be there. And when that finally happens, 5G, Wi-Fi, Ethernet in every DJ booth, it'll just be a case of log in and get on with it. Uh, there'll be very interesting times when that starts happening. Uh, all right then, more questions. Uh, this is awesome, by the way. I'm enjoying myself today. Hit the thumbs up and the likes if you're enjoying yourself, please. And also, please hit the share button. It really helps us to keep doing this stuff uh, every week if you share it and get it out there for us. Uh, so let's have a look at some more questions. This is from Kyle, who says, Greetings from Alabama. I'm, I'm considering making the transition from laptop only to controller. Uh, will I still be able to use my mouse for music selection? Wow, so you've always just DJed on your laptop. Yes, you will. Uh, you can use your mouse for music selection. I quite often find myself dragging tracks onto the decks like this, even though uh, I've got the knob in the middle of the controller. Yep, yeah, there'll be no problem at all with that. Don't worry about that. It's all gonna work fine. Uh, Yo Jazzy Hay on YouTube says, Hey Phil, huge fan. Thank you for being here, Yo Jazzy. Uh, and which DJ software would you recommend for a person starting out with DJing? Any advantages and disadvantages on the different softwares? So very, very quickly. Serato is good if you want to play all types of music. Tractor is good if you only want to play electronic music and you maybe want to start producing music in the future. Virtual DJ is great if you want to play karaoke, video, you want to play mobile gigs, events. And Recordbox is good if, if ultimately you want to play in clubs and you want to use Pioneer gear because it's a really easy learning curve from Recordbox to Pioneer gear. So there's a, you know, a potted four platform uh, uh, differentiator between the different bits of software. Yeah, but if you go to Digital DJ Tips, go and search in the top corner. We've got comparisons on all the software, also on our YouTube channel as well. All right then, so uh, DJ Mike, always good to have you here. Hi Phil, greetings from NYC. Uh, question, you guys, did you ever think of doing a course on using the Pioneer DJS 1000? Uh, we would love to do courses on everything, but the number of people using that compared to say the big DJ controllers is so small that it's really not worth our while to make that. Uh, but if you've got any particular questions on it, uh, please do ask them over in Student Hub if you're a member of our um, any of our courses or in Global DJ Network if you're not, uh, because we can certainly help you out with questions on that stuff there. Um, so someone wants to tell him to inverse his camera. Ah, I know what might have happened. I might have forgotten to fit, flip my camera back. Uh, I had it inverted the other day. Yep, there we go. Hey, back to normal. So now my book is gonna look right. There you go, people. Yeah, I, I was uh, messing around the other day and I forgot to flip it back. Thank you very much uh, for that little piece of advice, uh, Daniel. Uh, so uh, anyway, Raj also says, I've read the whole book and now I feel like a pro. Uh, well, thank you very much for that and I'm glad it's helped you. Um, all right then, um, now that the world is going live streaming, can you do a video streaming on multiple platforms, including Mixcloud, and can you do it with Streamlabs? Uh, so you can do it on multiple platforms and you can actually monetize your streaming now on Mixcloud, which is really uh, interesting. Now, before you all get very excited, unless you've got a big audience offline, like you already play to hundreds of people every week, uh, you ain't gonna be able to suddenly make lots of money from your uh, Mixcloud mixes. But that said, Mixcloud has got a way of monetizing your mixes. We just published this post today over on Digital DJ Tips called How to Legally Make Money from Your DJ Mixtapes and Live Streams. And this is from uh, Mixcloud. And you can do this uh, by signing up for something called Mixcloud Select. And when you sign up for Mixcloud Select, they give you a little button on your Mixcloud page where people can actually choose to give you money if you give them a reason to give you money. So here's my Mixcloud page that it's uh, loading in the background now quite slowly by the look of it. There you go. So see this support for $2.99 a month there? Uh, you could click that and then you can sign up and give me money. Now, I'm not asking you to do that. I don't need your money, I promise you. Uh, but I set this up to kind of test the way this works. And it's really, really cool. So uh, if you are a DJ with a following, you can monetize your mixes now over on Mixcloud, which is really cool. It's cool. It's called Mixcloud Select. Uh, so, uh, but you can certainly stream to multiple platforms and you do that by using a service called Restream. 
uh, and Restream will let you send one stream out of your software and it'll go live everywhere. So here over on, uh, I'll show you Restream. This is Restream going on over on our page at the moment. Uh, so this is what it looks like. You have your channels. There's me currently talking to you about Restream uh, there. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm going live on YouTube and Facebook and Twitch. Uh, and also I would be on Mixcloud, but I forgot to connect it up. Uh, so that's how it all works. So Restream is a great service and you can get started over on Restream for free, actually. Uh, so go and have a look at that if you want to stream to multiple platforms. All right, then. Tom says, I want to learn to scratch. I have a controller, but no turntables. Do I need samples? Where can I get them? Right. Digital DJ tips, people. Please fix Tom on Facebook up with a link to our scratch pack. Uh, my team, Tom, uh, will fix you up with a link to the digital DJ tips scratch pack. And that will give you sounds and it'll get you started in scratching, uh, which is awesome on your controller. You don't need anything else. You can do it on your controller. It's fine. But if you want to learn how to do it on your controller or well, we have a course called scratching for controller djs uh, and it's this course here all new scratching for controller djs you'll find this on the courses page on digital dj tips and this will teach you everything you need to know about how to scratch on your controller not on turntables on your controller thousands and thousands of djs have learned to scratch with us through this course it's got everything you need in it the sound the tuition tutor feedback to tell you where you're going wrong it's an awesome course so head over to uh, our courses page if you're really serious about this we can teach you and would absolutely love to tom uh, all right then martin what's the best way to stream to both mixcloud live and twitch uh yes i've just shown you restream martin so i hope that's useful uh, for you. Uh, another Martin. Hi Phil, do you like mixing Acid House from 87 to 91? Oh, now you're talking Martin. Uh, what UK DJs do you listen to? I listen to all kinds of DJs, but uh, you know, from that era, I still listen to the greats, to Paul Oakenfold and people like that. Uh, and uh, I love the Utah Saints. Look up the Utah Saints if you want some really good old school DJ mixes. Uh, but um, uh, cool. All right. So let's keep looking at uh, the uh, questions coming in here. I'm just scrolling because there's too many for me to answer. So I want to answer a good mixture of questions. Uh, what's the best place to use for samples, loops and any other sounds for Ableton? I just love Splice, splice.com. I think they're brilliant. So uh, I wouldn't go any further than that unless you've got good reason to. Uh, although Loop Masters are really good over on the, with the, the Beatport family as well. All right then. Um, DJ Trainwreck, Trainwreck says, do you think Newmark will eventually upgrade their NV line? I don't know. I mean, Newmark are going all out at the moment, aren't they? This is the new Newmark controller. If you haven't seen our broadcast on this recently, this is the Newmark, uh, the Newmark Platinum FX. Uh, the good thing about the Newmark Platinum FX is it's got these effects in the middle. So you can put on like a, a filter and quickly bang it into your mix like that, which is really nice, uh, and flanges and stuff as well. And they've got a hold, leave that on. But you know, especially with Echo, uh, you can just jog this track forward a little bit so that we're in a place. In fact, that track hasn't got a place with a beat. Let's go to a track with a beat. So you've got this Echo here, which is awesome because you can uh, quickly just punch in an Echo on a note that you like the sound of, and it will, uh, You hear that? Really, really simple, really easy to use. Uh, and I love the way that works. I just think it makes effects so much more fun than just, uh, you know, having to press buttons and knobs and stuff. So those paddle effects are really nice on that new controller. I think if they're going to upgrade their other controllers, they're going to start adding paddle effects in like that. Uh, I really like them. By the way, they've got pedigree, those kind of effects. They come from posh DJ gear like this, the Rain, uh, the Rain 70. Uh, this has got paddles in the middle as well. Here they are. You know, so that's trickle down. Rain is actually owned by the same company. So what you're seeing going on there is that all the cool features from like Rain and Den and DJ are filtering down to Newmark, which is cool for Newmark DJs. They make some great gear. All right then, so um, 
Lee says, Phil, I've been DJing for over 20 years using all sorts of gear. I've got great skill, but where I struggle is promoting myself on social media. Any tips? I could give you loads of tips. I mean, in the back of the book, remember the book is free, digitaldjtips.com slash join. In the back of the book, we do have a section on building your profile, getting regular gigs, getting involved in your local scene uh, here at the, uh, at the back of the book. So have a read of that. But the thing with social media is people think they can go online and do something and suddenly they'll have all these fans who are nothing to do with everyone they know in their life, nothing to do with everyone they know to date, nothing to do with everyone who's on their phone. It doesn't work like that. You start with the people you know and you work out from them. So you've got to look for the three or four people and it could be your wife or husband, could be one of your kids if you're lucky, it could be your best friend from years ago. You've got to look for the three or four people who love what you do and you've got to follow them and engage them on social media and give them stuff they like and they might just tell one or two people. And then you engage that four or five people and they might tell one or two people if you're sharing mixes and being generous and seeing what they're asking about music and helping them and they might engage a few more. And then you've got a following of 20 or 30 people. It builds out from who you know. So don't think that you can kind of like go and find a brand new audience for yourself online. It doesn't work that way. Uh, so, it, you, you know, you have to kind of build out from what you know. That's, that's what I'm saying. Right. OK, I'm going to... Uh, Work up from the most recent question. No, I'm not. I'm going to go back to the, the beginning. Uh, um, so, hey, um, Periscope will never cut you off or mute you, says Chris. The problem with Periscope and with Twitter is they have no deals at all with the record companies. And what might happen is if a record company sees you doing it, they will just say, bar that person's account for life. It happened to us. We used a little bit of a track on Sony Music to show a mixing technique. Uh, on a very short Twitter video once and we got our Twitter account suspended and we had to go groveling to Sony in New York to get it back. Uh, be very careful with copyrighted material on Twitter and Twitter platforms is my, uh, is my tip. Uh, Steve says, is it worth switching from Algorithms DJ Pro 2 to Serato DJ Pro? Have you got any noteworthy side-by-side -side comparisons? Look, if you're not scared if you're not scared, if, you're, if there's nothing wrong with the platform you're using, don't switch. Um, DJ Pro is a really good piece of software. Um, they're comparable, is what I would say. No point switching. It's not one of the biggest pieces of software, but it's a really good piece of software. Um, right, well, James, is there any other thing, apart from not going into the red, I should be doing to make sure my recorded videos and live streams are as loud as possible? No, there isn't. Just don't go into the red, but keep them as loud as you can up to the red. Um, all right then, more, uh, more of your live comments. Um, uh, you can actually stream in Algorithms DJ with Spotify, but it won't allow you to record in the app. You can use OBS or some other software to record. Thanks for that tip, DJ Pep in your step. Um, all right then. Um, I'm just scanning for questions. That's because we're live, right? So, uh, Tech TV, oh, thank you very much. Tech One TV, I like the live stream, Phil. You should continue doing them every Friday. It's good to talk and ask your perspective. I'm a beginner and I've started to learn slowly. Well, that's what we're here for. We're not here for the experts. We're here to help beginners. Um, all right then, so uh, more questions. Um, Matthew, bit of help on the PC question. I've been working in IT for 20 years. When it comes to PCs, uh, you want to look specifically for business workstations and laptops. Uh, these are typically higher quality and usually come with a one to three year factory warranty, says Matthew, coming in on that as well. So thank you very much, uh, people, uh, for that. I'm not going to get involved in the PC Mac debate. We've always used Macs. I used PCs for a long time before I did. They both worked fine for me and they both crashed every now and then for me. Um, all right then, Clint. Hi, Phil. Great channel. Thank you. Beginner DJ first gig. Is it advisable to practice a set or should one prepare two sets for party or wedding? Right, prepare your set, take twice the amount of music you think you're gonna need. So let's say you're playing for four hours and you think you're gonna play 20 records in every hour. That's 80 records. So have 160 tracks prepared for your set. That's the one you wanna play from. Then prepare another set just in case it all goes wrong. Uh, you know, oh, what if they don't like any of my music? Well, if you're a new DJ and you're really not sure what you can get away with, I would have a set B arranged as well. But very quickly you'll realize if you pack a set that's about twice the number of tunes that you need, that you, you very quickly you get good at predicting you know, every outcome that could possibly happen. And what is good about that is you're not sat there looking through your whole collection every time you DJ out, because that gives you this. What am I gonna play next? 
oh no, there's too much, what am I gonna play next? You never wanna be DJing from your whole library. Instead, put the work in before you get to the gig. Think very hard, close your eyes, imagine the dance floor. Who's there? What do they want? What are they likely to, who are they likely to be? How old? How many mixtures of girls and boys? How many kids? How many older people if you're playing a, a mobile gig? Um, what are they into? Um, and plan your set accordingly, carefully putting records into a set that you think will work for them, and then think, hmm, if they don't like that, what, what might they like instead? Start to put those in, and when you've got a list that's twice as long as the amount of tunes you're actually gonna be able to play, you'll probably find that that list is long enough to cover every eventuality, and not have you scrolling through it endlessly looking for something to play next. You're just like, quick look, yep, that'll do, and it'll generally work. Twice the length of the set you've got. That is the sweet spot. Uh, all right then, um, is there any way to broadcast with Serato DJ like in Virtual DJ? No, Virtual DJ is the only software that lets you broadcast directly from the software and it's brilliant for that as well. Um, Graham says, you're looking sharp, mate. Hair and beard trimmed. I have to, I've got to get used to trimming the beard. It, it starts to look bad. Uh, my hair, ha hair hasn't been cut, Graham, uh, because I'm waiting to get back to the barber when they all open up again here. But thank you. I appreciate you noticing. <laughs> Uh, Matthew, we've got a minimum spec for PC users here. Uh, i5, preferably i7 or i9 CPU, at least 16 gig RAM, and an SSD at least 256 gigabytes, and definitely full HD resolution. I would add to that, get something that is solid, that's not made of plastic, that's not bendy, that won't break in a DJ booth. Uh, all right then. Um, uh, more of your live questions. Um, can a disabled person with one hand DJ? Certainly you can, Jeff3B. Do not let that stop you. Um, I realize I'll, I'll never be a scratch DJ. Y there's ways and means. Do not let that stop you. If that drummer from Def Leppard can drum with one hand in the best, you know, one of the best rock bands in the world, you can DJ with one hand. I would, I would actually, you know, I would actually say I could probably do it myself with one hand, thinking about it. You can certainly do it. Do not let that stop you, Jeff 3B. Uh, we wish you every, every luck with that. Seriously, I don't see any problem at all with that. Uh, all right then, could you make some tutorials for Virtual DJ 2020 and or Mixed Vibes Cross? We could do, a lot of people use Virtual DJ, but we tend to find our Virtual DJ tutorials don't get many views and we don't know why. Serato, Recordbox, Tractor do really well. Uh, but yes, we'll consider that. Uh, so Matthew says the Dell XP15 uh, is a beast and has, ne has proven solid and reliable. It's never let me down. So there you go. Um, how do I get pizza grease off DJ gear? I know it's a DJ sin. <gasps> it is a sin. Uh, I don't know. If anyone's got any tips for getting pizza grease off DJ gear, please do let us know. Um, so... <laughs> All right then, questions, questions, questions. I'm scrolling. Um, scrolling through everything you're asking and I'm gonna try and find some new ones. All right, how do you determine whether to use a one beat or a half beat echo? I struggle to decide which to use. It doesn't matter, it depends on what you're echoing. Let's have a look at the difference in sound between a one beat and a half beat echo over here on the gear, people. Uh, I'll just switch back to the gear. There we go. So I will select, uh, this is a 1B echo that I've got set now on this echo here. So I'm gonna put your 1B echo on. That's what a 1B echo sounds like. This is what a half beat echo sounds like. Do it one more time, it's a 1B echo. and a half beat echo. I'll make the one beat echo longer actually so you can hear it better. This is the one, one more time. So it just decides on what you're trying to do and it decides on, it depends on the music you're playing. Uh, my colleague Steve was recording a house uh, transitions tutorial the other day and he was going between the one beat, the half beat and the three quarter beat echo. Another discussion, the three-quarter beat echo. It's absolutely brilliant. I love that echo. Uh, but yeah, it just depends. You know, it just depends on the sound you're grabbing and what you're trying to do and what's going on in the music you're playing. If you're playing tracks where the, the producer has put lots of little half-beat echoes in, then using a half-beat echo is definitely a good idea because you're complementing what's going on in the music around you. Uh, one skill of DJing is, is hearing what's already in the productions and either accentuating it, so if there's lots of filters, you kind of filter at the same time to make it sound even more than people remember on the record, or spotting something going on in one record, mixing in another record and kind of mimicking it so that it sounds like the first record is still there. So complementing and accentuating stuff that's already there using effects, it depends what's already there, right? 
as to which you're going to use out of the various options available to you. Thank you for that question. I love questions like that. Uh, all right then. Uh, I want to pull the trigger on the mixed track platinum, but I've heard rumors there's a new mixed deck coming. Uh, should I wait? Well, it depends if you want the CD decks and stuff that's on a mixed deck. Uh, or if you don't, then go for the platinum. I've not heard any rumors, by the way, on that. Do you think Spotify will come back as a streaming service? Says Gilster11. I don't think it will, but who knows? I have been proven wrong. Uh, with clubs looking like they won't be opening till earliest 2021, says Graham. Do you think there could be a shift in Pioneer's club percentage share? I see Denon taking a bigger share of the market from live stream takeovers. What a great little, little uh, bit of thinking there. Is clubs being closed giving Denon a chance to take a lead on Pioneer? Wow, I didn't think about that. I don't know the answer to that, Graham, but thank you for putting the thought in our heads. I'm sure other people will be thinking about that. Uh, Aidan says, I don't think Denon will take much from Pioneer anytime soon. So there you go. Um, all right then, more live questions. I'm absolutely loving this today, people. Thank you, A, so many, many of you for being here and B, for asking so many questions. What I've got to say, what I like best about teaching DJing in live environments, and we do a lot of it. In our courses, there's a lot of live lessons. In Student Hub, there's a lot of live lessons. In our Digital DJ Lab program, there's a lot of live lessons. But what I love most about it is getting asked stuff that I would never have thought of myself. And then I... I think about DJing in a different way because of it. And I find myself teaching the recorded lessons and the stuff you guys and girls ask and we talk about on these comes out naturally and it's kind of assimilated. So thank you. Thank you for asking these questions. They mean a lot to me. Uh, all right then. Um, so DJ Mike Marquez says, if you're using echoes in house, you really need to feel your music. But also on most mixes, you can preview the effects before you play them. Uh, so thank you very much for that tip there as well. Uh, all right then. So... Can you recommend another music library manager instead of iTunes? I would say use the one in your DJ software. You know, if you're a Rekordbox user, that is one hell of a music library system that is in Rekordbox. And especially with some of the new apps that are coming out nowadays that let you share, I think Mixo is one of them. Mixo is a new app that lets you put your Rekordbox library um, or, or put your whole music library in the cloud and then you can download it for Recordbox, Serato, Tractor. It's pretty damn cool. It's called Mixo. So let me show you what Mixo looks like. This is what Mixo looks like. Uh, it's at mixo.dj, M-I-X-O.dj. You can basically put your music library in the cloud and then download it for all software, all computers. It's pretty awesome. Uh, so you could use Recordbox or even a service like this as that your kind of central cloud library. Now, the reason I went off on one there a bit is I think Mixo looks brilliant. So we will find out whether it takes off. Uh, but yeah, if you use DJ software like Recordbox, just use Recordbox. Serato's library is all right, but I don't like the fact that if you make a mistake in your crates or whatever, you can't in any way I can find quickly undo that mistake. You know, you delete a crate by mistake, it's gone. Whereas in iTunes, you can hit Control Z and it comes back. Um, so Serato is all right. Tractor is useless. They really got to fix their library up because it's not very good at all. And Virtual DJs is all right as well. So, you know, you might just want to use your library system in your software. Or as I say, why not check out some of the new apps like Mixo, Record Buddy, has got a kind of central library which uh, is on your computer, but it also lets you then, uh, you know, download that, well, add that library to any DJ software you want. This is Record Buddy that I'm showing you now on the screen. Uh, you can find that at next.audio, next.audio. Uh, so you might want to look at one of these. If you're a PC user, lots of people love Media Monkey on PC. You might want to have a look at that. Uh, but I, I tend to just use my DJ software nowadays, I've got to say. Uh, since all the changes to iTunes, I couldn't be bothered keeping up with it. Um, all right then, so more questions. Um, I'm just looking. Any in any uh, recommendations to improve quality sound live streaming in Zoom from laptop to my controller? Um, there is a setting in Zoom uh, about optimised for voice or something. I can't remember what it's called. Find it and change it because it will make music sound better on Zoom. I, I'm sorry, I can't remember what it's called, but there is a tick box in the audio settings. Uh, find any audio setting options and try toggling them because one of them makes a big difference. And I can't remember what it is offhand, I have to say. Uh, but uh, yeah, there is definitely a setting in Zoom that can in improve your live streams. Uh, so I hope that helps you, Alex. Um, all right then. Um, so. 
DJ I Lee says, the best audio practice, lower the input on your volume by 15 decibels and load a VST limiter and boost the gain 15 decibels on the plugin. Keeps everything loud and keeps it from distorting. Yes. So if you're using OBS and you can use a VST plugin, great, that's a really good piece of advice there. I think it's gonna go over most people's heads, that one, but thank you very much for sharing it. Some people will be watching saying that was solid gold. So if you're one of those people, I'll put that on the screen again so you can scribble it down. Lower the input by 15 decibels, then load a VST limiter and boost the gain by 15 decibels on the plugin, which will keep everything loud and keep it from distorting. You know, mastering engineers in studios will say, give me headroom so I can do something to your mix. And headroom means not pushing too loud early on and let something down the line make your mix sound hotter, make it sound louder and better. A, a limiter that's boosting what it's given uh, will do that for you. It'll smooth out the rough edges of your mix and that's what DJ Eilie's talking about there. As I say, over most people's heads, but we do like to get those pro tips in here as well. But something for everyone. Um, okay, so uh, let's keep looking. My only regret with the RX2 is that it's a two channel controller. I'm thinking about getting the DDJ1000 to have when I need four channels. I think Pioneer's next standalone controllers will definitely be four channel but of course they haven't launched them yet and who knows when that's going to happen. Unknown, who's just someone over on our uh, Facebook group, um, on Facebook group, unless you give us permission, we can't tell your names. It says, what did I miss? You missed loads, unknown, but you can watch the replay. And if you have just tuned in, by the way, everyone, you can watch these replays, but subscribe, follow, click show first, click notify, and then you will be told when we go live on these and you can join us live from the beginning. Uh, right, okay. Uh, so more of your live questions coming up right now. Um, I'm just scratching scratch. A lot of you are kind of copy and pasting your question over and over again. I understand that, but it's kind of annoying when I'm looking for new questions. I will get to you in the end. I do try and get to everyone. Uh, so please just once or twice at the most. Can you use the iRig 2 with Streamlabs? Yes, you can. Just get the, the iRig 2 is the one that's got the, um, it's the one that's got the audio input cable, hasn't it? Not the digital cable. Just plug it into the, you need a TRRS lead. I'm, I'm riffing on this because I'm not sure. You need a TRRS cable and I might just run and get you one. This is a TRRS cable, everyone. See these four little bits of, four little bits of silver and one, let me get it in focus. I know it's small, but they've got three three black rings and four bits of gold, four bits of metal. The normal plug like that has got two bits of black and three bits of metal. It's called tip ring ring sleeve. What this is, is the socket on your laptop. The socket on your laptop has a microphone in and a stereo audio out. So two of these bits of metal are for the microphone, for the stereo audio out. One of them's for the microphone in and one of them's the earth kind of thing. So. You need one of these leads. This is called a Rode SC4. It's a TRRS male to TRS female. And I think you plug the output from your iRig 2 into there, but I can't remember exactly what the iRig 2 is. Then you can plug straight into your DJ gear, uh, and sorry, your laptop, and from your laptop, you can then use that audio feed. I'm just checking the iRig 2 now, because I might just give you a right load of rubbish. Um, and yes, I think I was right about the iRig 2. That's exactly what it is. It's an interface. Yep, it is. Let me show it you on the screen. This is an iRig 2. That picture in the middle there. Um, let's zoom in on that for you so you can see it a bit better. Whoops, I haven't zoomed in. I've switched the screen there. Uh, no, I can't zoom in without messing something up. Anyway, basically it lets you hijack the input on your phone, or nowadays only iPads and, and laptops have that headphones input anyway, headphones output a microphone input and record from that. So yes, you can use it, but you're gonna to need to get, in fact, no, sorry, I've just completely told you rubbish. That cable on the iRig 2 has already got what I just showed you built into it. So, um, so you can just use it as is. I had a feeling there was something wrong with that advice I was giving you then, so that's it. No, just the iRig 2 should work if you plug it into your laptop and use it with OBS. It will only be in mono, that input from your DJ controller, and you probably have to keep the volume down in order to not distort it, and it's not the best solution, but it will work. Uh, all right then, more of your live comments. Um, so, 
Uh, Lissaria says, I want to do a glitch mix this weekend, but most of my audience has been really enjoying my trap and future bass mixes, but I've had past complaints on glitch music, so how to breach that gap? Start with what people want and transition into what you want to play. And if you keep people with you all the way through that, you're more likely to kind of get away with it, um, is the answer to that. Um, when do you think the new Pioneer DDJ, CDJs will be released? Says Subculture, no idea, uh, but they will be releasing them, uh, I'm sure. Lots of you want to know that. Uh, Jan says, any rumors on the new Nexus 3000 or whatever they're going to be calling them? Nope, I have no rumors on that at all. Uh, so, um, um, I found that isopropyl alcohol, 90% plus, does well to clean the external parts of my DJ gear, as well as your hands, of course, and it is a commodity nowadays for sure. Uh, do you think there'll be a new Pioneer DJM similar to the V10, but with fewer channels in the future? Possibly there will, yeah. I think that's probably part of a new series of gear from Pioneer. Um, is it worth to buy songs from Beatport? Well, you've got stuff on Beatport, uh, Jan, that you can't get elsewhere, but it does cost a bit more on Beatport. So um, I would say buy it on Beatport if you can't find it anywhere else. You can find it on iTunes or Amazon for cheaper, buy it there. Um, uh, lots and lots of you asking about the new Pioneer gear. Uh, William on YouTube, do you know anywhere, any the date or information when the CDJ Nexus 3s are coming out? Um, there you go, someone loved the VST comment. I knew someone would. Daniel is very pleased with that comment, so thank you for passing that one along. Uh, are you looking for, uh, I'm looking to buy a new controller, says Alex. I want something portable and self-contained. Uh, it would be great if it would be fully featured and similar to what I'd find in a club environment. Well, did you see this controller a little bit earlier on? This is the Denon DJ Go. It's portable, it's self-contained, it's professional, uh, and it costs a thousand bucks. It's got everything you might need. So why not have a go at that one? I actually bent down too quickly to pick that up. Have you ever been bent down in like in a bookshop on the lower shelf and you get up and you're like, whoa, that just happened to me then. Phil passing out on a live live stream would be fun, wouldn't it? Um, Matt says, I love the dance music formula course. This is our course on how to produce dance music. Would you ever consider creating an advanced course one day? Yes, we would. We'd love to add modules on sound design and that kind of thing. But, you know, our... Our main aim is to help you become a better DJ and DJ producer, which, and the most people we can help are beginners who've never done it before. So our, our dance music formula course, if you don't know that course, people, takes you from beginner to finishing your first tune that you can play in your DJ sets, and then going back to the beginning and doing it again. Uh, but yes, we do want to make some advanced stuff there, Matt. So watch this space. We'll see what we can do. Um, so... Um, Streaming DJ sets wasn't the norm until Digital DJ Tips predicted it long ago. Thank you, Phil, for doing what you do and keeping DJs informed with relevant technologies and predictions, says Carlos. It doesn't feel like work. Trust me, me, Steve, Ben, Scott, Joey, Mark, Faye, Juan, me, uh, Lauren, the whole team. Sorry if I've missed any of you. I am live. Um, we love doing this stuff. Trust me, we love it. We live and breathe it. It's better than work. Uh, Graham says, got a bounce, Phil, have a great week, and you, Graham. Uh, so, uh, more of your live questions, just for the last minute or two. Uh, do you really need the iRig 2, or can you just use your TRRS? You can just use this, frankly. You don't need the iRig 2, it's just, it's just an adapter. Um, so, um, how's lockdown in Gibraltar? Are you allowed down the pub? Uh, we are not. The pubs are closed. The, 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 the shops have just opened again, but the pubs are still closed here. Um, what's your thoughts on the DDJ SX3? Says DJ Ziggy. I'm thinking of upgrading for my SR. If you want the extra channels, upgrade, but the SR is a great controller, so if not, stick with the SR. Um, all right then. Um, any news on Dead and updating their MCX8000? They have just released new Catalina, I think, drivers for the MCX8000. They've just released something for the MCX8000. So go check their downloads and support page. Uh, I noticed that the other day. Uh, so yes, they have just done something to upgrade that controller. Uh, all right then, um, I think, you know, we are pretty much done here. High 51 cent in uh, Las Vegas. I think we're pretty much done here, people. I mean, there's loads of questions I haven't had a chance to, uh, I haven't had a, t a chance to, <laughs> answer. Let's do something that's nothing to do with DJing to end off. Jason of the Disbury family says, on a scale of 1 to 1984, could be a reference to the George Orwell Big Brother classic there, uh, how free do you feel wearing your muzzle while walking around the grocery store following directions taped to the floor? 
I don't feel free at all. I have no surveillance apps on my phone because I don't have a phone because my one single battle against the surveillance big brother world that we live in is not carrying that portable computer around in my pocket that is tracking every bloody thing I do. My phone, folks, which is charging over here on the camera charging cable, it makes phone calls and that is it. So if you want to track me, you've got to work out a way of tracking me on that. Now, I know you can probably do it with, uh, you know, with triangulating the, uh, the, the masts of the mobile signal, but uh, no, I don't like it. And I think there is a downside to all this surveillance and stuff. But anyway, it's another discussion, Jason, but uh, you know, needs must. There's a virus out there. It hasn't gone away. And I guess we do have to be careful. Uh, all right then. Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, and I, you know, it gives me a good opportunity to say wherever you are in the world and however this current strange time is affecting you. I do hope you're, you're coping. I do hope we've been able to bring you an hour of normality in your world. However, this has hit you. And I know it's hit more of us, some of us more than others and so on. I think there probably isn't anyone who hasn't got someone they know or know of who's been affected directly by this. So I just hope you're safe. I hope you're well. As I say, I hope we've been able to help you with a bit of normality for the last hour. Please do hit share. Uh, if you've enjoyed this, I would really, really appreciate that. It helps us to do it. Do it right now. Um, and that'll be your last thing you do for me now uh, today. Meanwhile, get good, stay safe, make the moments, people. Have a great weekend. I will see you on Sunday at exactly this time, wherever you are in the world. In 48 hours from now, I will see you for my live stream live from my lockdown balcony in Gibraltar. No doubt my kids will be dancing away in the background again if the music's good enough for them. Uh, and uh, so join me for that. Join me on Tuesday at the time we started today uh, for another um, live session like this. It's Tuesday Tips Live. We will have a topic which we'll be exploring and then join me again next week, although it's on Thursday next week, not Friday. We're going to switch these to Thursdays because as lockdown eases, People are starting to get gigs. Lucky people are starting to get Friday gigs again. And certainly further east from where we are now, it's the evening. Uh, I don't want to be live streaming when, you, when you're doing your gigs. So we're going to move these to Thursdays as of next week. So, uh, but it will still be the, the Q&A session with me where you ask anything. Guys and girls, thank you very much for being here. It's as always been an absolute pleasure. Uh, Look at this awesome channel. Oh, look this awesome channel up, people. Amazing Polly, the global health mafia, mafia protection rabbit racket. We could be getting into, uh, into some very good alternative information or we could be getting into complete conspiracy theory uh, rabbit holes here. I don't know, but that seems like a good place to leave it, right? So whatever you believe and wherever you are, stay safe, people, and I will see you next week. Uh,